the Minister's name in Stubbs Gazette is as a result of him breaching an order of the High Court. Yet the Minister has given no indication to when he will comply with that High Court order. The Minister also directly contradicted his own register of interest as a TD. In his SIPO declaration, he stated that he transferred his nursing home interest to a blind trust. Yet we now know from the Minister's own mouth last night that that declaration was untrue. Excuse Tarnas me, excuse me, we cannot, this is not a court of law. The Minister has made a statement, you cannot accuse him of improper behaviour during any parliamentary question. There are other ways of dealing with this matter and if you care to contact the officials, they will advise you how to do so. Now please refrain from accusing the Minister of something that he's not here to defend himself. I am not accusing the Minister. No, I, am, I am just repeating. I am just, I am of, just of repeating the what house. the Minister stated last night, Kion Kola, in relation to his own SIPO uh, declaration. Please proceed along and those Tarnister, lines. Tarnister, as you know, making a false declaration to SIPO is a very serious matter. Sorry, again, you cannot state that the Minister made a false declaration to SIPO based on what was said last night. Now, would you please refrain from making accusations? Thank you. It appears from the Minister's statement last night that when he took office in March 2011 to the 12th of January 2012 that the Minister was in breach of SIPO guidelines. Tarnisha, the first question is, do you now agree that SIPO should investigate this matter? Secondly, Minister Riley has not dispelled the concerns we have regarding his conflict of interest. We have a Minister for Health presiding over hundreds of bed closures in the public nursing sector while being an acknowledged stakeholder in a private residential care home. Tarnishda, do, do you share these concerns regarding his conflict of interest? Thank you. Tarnishda. Well, uh, the Minister for Health uh, came into the House uh, last night and he, he made a statement uh, about those matters. Um, I, accept that. I accept that statement. Um, the issue of uh, any member of the House uh, having uh, uh, private business interests is not, is not new. We have procedures as to how that is to be dealt with. There's a procedure requirement for a declaration to be made to SIPO, which applies to every member of the House. Uh, there is a requirement in respect of uh, office holders uh, that uh, they do not take an active involvement in uh, their uh, business affairs, that, uh, that there's a way in which uh, they put that at arm's length while they're uh, a holder of office and uh, the Minister described how he had uh, done that in the course of his uh, statement um, uh, of his statement last night uh, and he also um, uh, informed the House that he had sought the advice uh, of SIPO uh, as is the appropriate thing uh, for him to do and that he has uh, complied uh, with that uh, advice. Uh, no, I accept uh, that uh, I accept that statement uh, the, in relation to issues relating to uh, conflict of interest, as I've said, there are rules which uh, govern the way in which uh, all of that is to be dealt with. It is uh, the procedure for declaration, uh, the procedure whereby ministers do, are, do not have an involvement uh, in any private uh, business uh, matter uh, while they are uh, an office holder, uh, and where there's any doubt about any of those issues, or where any individual office holder or member of the House has a doubt about those issues, uh, the place to go to is to, to SIPO uh, for advice, which is what the Minister did on this occasion. Well, in Ireland there are 46 licensed moneylenders licensed by the central bank and under Irish legislation there is no limit on the actual APR, the interest rates that these moneylenders could charge. We have moneylenders operate in this state that charge in 210% interest, 210% APR. Uh, what we have done in this bill is to introduce a bill which would cap the amount of APR, the amount of interest that a moneylender could charge uh, on any of its customers at 40%. Now that would have a huge 
impact on people who are forced to go to money lenders or because of the high um, cost, because of the, the charges and taxes that they're being imposed on, because of lost income. And we know from the Irish League of Credit Unions report that was published earlier this week that 10% of people are going to money lenders just to pay their, their weekly bills. So what we've done is introduce a cap. So if you look at, for example, what money lenders are charging on a 500 euro loan at 210%, they're basically profiting to the tune of 186 euro if the loan is over a duration of six months and 375 euro if it's over the period of a year. If you go to the credit union for the same loan, the interest that you would be charged is 13 euro and 25 euro respectively. So I think it's just incomprehensible, unjustifiable that any government, any TD or any minister would allow these exorbitant interest rate to prevail and that's why I've introduced the back, the, this bill to place a cap on the interest rates that can apply. We will have this bill debated in the Dáil on Tuesday and Wednesday. It is the subject of Sinn Féin's uh, private members' business time that will be in the Dáil on Tuesday and Wednesday and there will be a vote on Wednesday night on this issue. The purpose of today's meeting with CE supervisors is to discuss the issue of CE schemes and in particular the review that was announced by the Minister uh, seven months ago now uh, when he introduced cuts in the budget of 66% to the funding for materials uh, and for training in community employment. Uh, there was an outcry at that time and there was many campaigns around the country about it. Uh, and we've been involved in that and the Minister under political pressure committed to having the review and that review, uh, we haven't had an outcome of that yet. We were promised uh, to have the outcome of it by the end of March, and that hasn't happened. There are, there's huge uncertainty right throughout the state over this. Uh, some community employment schemes are being told to have six to 700 euros in, uh, in material and training grants. One CE scheme, where it's reported today, has been told that they have 99 euros. And this is causing huge problems for the participants, for the supervisors, but also for the sponsoring bodies. Uh, the sponsoring bodies, the people who are sponsoring these schemes, uh, the voluntary, local voluntary committees, these people are providing vital services, essential services in many rural and many disadvantaged urban communities. And we must do everything we can to protect them. Uh, the supervisors here today and the members of the Impact Trade Union and Paddy Quinn here who has been heading up the delegation have highlighted some very important facts for us here and we really have to make our voices heard in the coming weeks over this to try and get these issues resolved. It's not good enough to play a divide and conquer game with them as the Minister seems to be doing given different schemes, different rates uh, of allowances and also having different parts of the country treated differently. There has to be a level playing pitch, there has to be certainty and that's where we must get to. Uh, just to say, first of all I want to say thanks to Brian Stanley for organising the meeting uh, with a delegation from Impact and some of the drugs uh, programmes that exist in Dublin City. Uh, basically what we're looking for is to bring to the attention of elected representatives the need for consistency across the country in the delivery of the community employment program and uh, the need for the current review being carried out by the government to deliver that consistency to each individual scheme and bring about uh, a, or do away with the lack of certainty that's there on the part of uh, supervisors, assistant supervisors and indeed participants across the country. It's to see that there's a maintenance of the delivery of programmes across the country to the communities that they work in and uh, basically what we're looking for just is, is that the national programme be dealt with on a national basis.